Ignition sequence Press the glowing start. object All to start the day. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Tower clear. Reporting the roll and pitch program with pitch Apollo 11 on proper heading. The first stage lifted Apollo 11's 6 million pound weight from the ground to a height of 62 miles before dropping away after its fuel was expended. The interstage ring provided a small amount of thrust to settle the fuel in the tanks so that the Stage 2 rockets could fire and get the Saturn V into a low Earth orbit. It also fell away when empty. And we have a good third stage now. The third stage fired once to get Apollo 11 into a parking orbit around the Earth and after a few hours for system checks, fired again to send it on its way to the Moon. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Uh, your go for separation. Shortly after leaving Earth orbit, the command and service modules separated from the now expended third stage and then turned around to extract the lunar module. Now the Apollo spacecraft could continue on its journey, rotating slowly to spread the intense heat of the sun across the entire spacecraft in what was jokingly known as barbecue mode. It was in this configuration that it entered orbit around the moon almost three days and a quarter million miles later. Apollo 11, this is Houston. You are confirmed to go for orbit. Once in orbit, the commander and lander pilot transferred to the lunar module and separated from the CSM to make their way to the lunar surface. This was the hardest and most dangerous part of the entire mission. The lunar module Eagle was a strange looking machine. It consisted of an ascent and descent stage. Only the ascent stage was designed to return to the CSM on the completion of a successful mission. The descent stage would be left on the surface of the moon. As the lunar module was designed to fly in the vacuum of space, there was no need for it to be aerodynamic. Weight was kept to an absolute minimum. The walls of the cabin were no thicker than a few sheets of aluminum foil. The astronauts didn't even have seats and piloted the ship standing upright in what was essentially a controlled fall from orbit. Look up to see the lunar module make its final descent. There were computer errors as well as giant craters and huge boulders which had to be avoided in order to find a safe place to land. As they neared the moon's surface, dust blown by the engine made judging the motion of the craft extremely difficult. They had done it, with less than a minute of fuel to spare. When you're ready to proceed, press the hatch on the Eagle. Seven hours later, the commander made his way down the ladder to stand upon the foot of the lunar module. Okay, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Okay. The combined 360-pound weight of the commander and his spacesuit was a mere 60 pounds in the one-sixth gravity of the moon, making movement extremely easy. The commander had to jump from the end of the ladder to Eagle's foot, as the landing was so gentle the legs had not compressed as intended when they touched down. All that remained to do was for the commander to take one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, onto the surface of the moon. 